Hey, welcome to this radio video and this is, uh, we're going to continue actually the series that I've started and uh, took a little break because of Christmas and the holidays on decoding digital signals with FLDG software. So uh, we decoded Morse code was uh, the first really official video um, and we're going to talk today about uh, BPSK31. BPSK31 is a great mode because it is very easy to um, decode. It is also uh, easy to decode even if you're in a noisy environment. It's a very surprising mode and uh, there's a lot of signals and I think I'm not very far off if I say that this is probably one of the most popular digital modes um, in amateur radio. So we are, you know, concentrating on amateur radio signals for the first part of the videos because amateur radio signals are easy to identify and are also easy to configure. Um, it's a little more difficult to decode Navtex or, you know, well, Navtex and uh, Citor is not too bad, but there are some digital modes, uh, commercial digital modes that are kind of difficult to uh, really uh, decode because you gotta play with FLDG settings. Uh, so, first of all, where do you find BPSK31 signals? Well, the, your best bet 7.070 is one of the spots. Also, 14.070. Look at these little tones. There are multiple tones here, and these are all BPSK signals. Uh, we have 21.070. That's also, this one is not a BPSK, but this is another frequency where you'll find some. And in the daytime, when 10 meters open, 28.070 is also a frequency for BPSK signals. So let's go to 14.070. Um, which is very, very full of signals right now. Once you find these, you'll have to go to your computer's FLDG software. So I'm going to close in on the screen here a little bit. And so, first of all, what you'll need to do is that on the top left of FLDG, you'll have to go into the op mode. And in the op mode, you'll go into something called PSK. And where you're on PSK, you go to BPSK31 and you click that. So on the bottom left of your window, you should actually see BPSK31 as the mode. Now look at the waterfall and look at all these traces. These are all BPSK signals, all of them. So all you have to do is go on one of them. So just click, for example, I'll click this one here. Once you click on it, you should start decoding. As you see here, these are the ID and U7D from W9AKU, which are amateur radio stations. And by the way, if you want to know who they are, where they are, just go to qrz.com, qrz.com, and you can enter their, their call letters. And you see here, I now have a clear decode of this BPSK signal on my computer just by, you know, putting the little cursor, the red lines on the signal. Try to be as precise as possible. That's the way you'll get the clearest decode, especially if the signal's weak. So here the uh, station, which is W9IKU, uh, no, NU7D, sorry, NU7D. And so uh, he's giving out the details of his uh, shack, actually. Uh, he's running a Kenwood 430S transceiver, has 35 watts of power, antenna, a TH6DXX, which is a six element tri-bander, up at 50 feet, 15 meters, and so on. So you see that he's giving out the details, and there's a lot of exchange of these details on amateur radio. If you want to switch to another station, decode something else, all you have to do is move the cursor around 
to another one. So, um, you know, we'll just wait a little bit for this operator license information and so on. Now, if you go on the waterfall, you see these other signals. So all you have to do is go on one of the signals you want to the code. So let's see, as you see signals come in and out. Sometimes you hear about conversations, sometimes only one side. That's because of propagation, especially when you're in the middle, you know, when a station, for example, here I'm in Montreal, Canada. Let's say there's a station in California and a station in Europe talking together. There's a chance that I might hear both because there's a big difference in distance between both. But if, for example, there's a station in Maine, which is just across the border, not that far from here, and the other stations in Germany, I might hear the German station, but not the main station in the United States because it's too close. It's skipping over me. So let's uh, click in the waterfall another signal. Here it goes. I'm clicking on that one now. And here we see decoding once again. Station in central Ohio. And just giving out some more details. Um, so, you know, BPSK31 is an ex extremely cool um, mode. Decoding is very easy and, you know, it's such, you know, an easy mode to try to decode when you see all these different lines in the waterfall. So, you can just, you know, pick one. I can go here, pick another one in the waterfall. And, you know, it doesn't take more than a second or two that it's already decoding and telling me what actually the station is uh, sending out right now. So, uh, you know, what you have mostly to understand in amateur radio because a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't understand all that uh, gibberish. Well, if I take one line here, W4YFJ, Bob, that's an amateur station. So W4YFJ, if you look it up in QRZ.com, you'll give, they'll give out the name and the address of the station. Then it says DE, duh. That means from, and there's AC8SM, which is basically call letters that you can also check up. Then you have RST. Let's say that there's RST 599 SW Florida. That means RST is kind of the simple code for um, international broadcasts. The amateur radio stations have a shorter one called RST. And here it says 599, which is the signal strength. 599 usually means pretty good. Southwest Florida is the SW Florida. Then it says BTU, which means back to you. And then it's the call letters K2, QQ, and so on. So, you know, it's really a matter of understanding a little bit about uh, some amateur radio uh, jargon here, you know, understanding a little more. And uh, once you get used to the way, you know, these stations actually send out uh, reports and talk together, well, you know, uh, you'll understand a little more what they're actually saying on the air. Also, what's cool is that um, you'll find some BPSK32 signals uh, 30, what, what, what's the BPSK31 signal, sorry, uh, that, you know, have real conversations. There are some stations that have really, uh, their regular, real, uh, you know, conversations that you can clearly understand. Uh, some stations, you know, will only exchange reports and so on. So this is, you know, an easy mode go through the bands and you know what even when a band doesn't have any signals let's say I go to 21.070 a little earlier there weren't a lot of signals there I do have a lot of noise but even if you have a lot of noise take a look at the waterfall it's very interesting because the waterfall you know sometimes you have nothing by ear you say well there's no signals here but when you look through the waterfall you might actually find a signal through it. Now you see there's one here, there's actually two. 
Let's try this one here. And here we go. Please K. The PSTK means please, you know, report back to me. So, you know, go on an amateur radio band and try to find these signals. And like I said, even if it's very noisy and you don't seem to hear nothing much, look at the waterfall. The waterfall gives you a lot of details of what might be possible to the code. Sometimes the waterfall gives you a very slight trace in the middle of nowhere. And it shows you that there's a signal, even though by here you probably hear only noise, which is interesting. So, uh, Fire up your FLDG software. Make sure that you, uh, you know, tune these signals and try to decode them. Uh, it's always nice and interesting to decode. BPSK31 signals are so easy uh, to decode that it's uh, also a very fun mode to, you know, just have fun with the computer. So to uh, give you again the details of the frequencies while well, you'll hear them. Um, mostly 7.070. Um, I've heard some also around 7.035.40 because depending on where you are in the world, singles are not always at the same spot. Then you have some on 14.070. Here you hear a lot. Uh, this is probably the, one of the great bands for BPSK31. Then there's uh, 21.070 and 28.070. Now I know there are a few in between frequencies, like there's uh, 18 megahertz does have some. Uh, but the most popular, I'm giving you really the most popular. And uh, I can tell you that BPSK31 signals are 24 hours a day. If you check the frequency ranges that I just gave you, um, it's pretty sure that whatever night or daytime it is, you'll hear these little tones of BPSK31 signals. So I'm going to leave you with, finally... Just a little audio of what it's going to sound like when you get on the frequencies. And notice that I'm in upper sideband. It's the way to actually decode digital signals, putting your receiver in upper sideband. If you don't have a switch upper or lower sideband, you'll have to play around with your little BFO or your little um, you know, wheel there where you can actually uh, change the tone and, until you decode something. So uh, this is uh, the little tutorial on decoding BPSK31 signals on um, FLDG. I hope you give it a try. And uh, hey, let me know what stations you heard on the air. Um, easy mode to decode, easy to use. So I hope you enjoyed 73s.